Hey everybody, I'm back. I've been away for a while. Sorry about that. Uh, it's just been no great excuse, just typical life stuff. Uh, holidays with the family and got sick. Uh, then just got back yesterday from a workshop in Yellowstone. And uh, that was awesome. If you want to get in on next year's Yellowstone Winter Workshop, shoot me an email. I don't have it up on my website yet, uh, completely dialed in. But if you uh, shoot me an email, get on the list first. That will guarantee your spot before it sells out. So uh, anyway, this is my annual uh, favorite photos of the year. So we're looking back towards 2019 right now. And uh, I've had just enough time to go through my photos and kind of live with them for a while and decide which ones are my favorites. So I picked out 20 that I call my favorites. Now some of those are going to be, I think, great photos and some of them I think are, you know, fine. They're good photos, uh, but they mean a lot to me for one reason or another, whether it be the experience of making them or the particular animal I had a connection with or the landscape or something, you know? So I, I'm not claiming that these are all like, oh my God, these are like game changer, top-notch, world-class images. Um, I think a couple of them are, but the rest of them are just my favorites. So that's totally subjective. You may agree, you may disagree, and that's cool. That's art, you know? It's totally subjective. So uh, with that intro, I'll get started. Here we go. These are in just chronological order. So uh, I'll just give you a little bit about each image when we go, go through these. So here we go. Number one, this is a raven, black and white conversion on this raven. Uh, just a beautiful portrait of this gorgeous bird. Uh, I converted it to black and white. Sometimes the, uh, well, not sometimes, the, in the right light, the, the feathers of a raven will kind of give a kind of a bluish tint, kind of a reflection of a blue color. And this had that in the color version, but I kind of didn't like that. I felt it was a little bit distracting and I wanted to go more for the, the texture of the feathers and that beard that's blowing in the wind. So this was like perfect head angle, uh, a little bit of snow falling. Um, and then this beard was kind of blowing in the wind and that, that gave me the gesture that I wanted out of the handful of images that I shot of this bird. Uh, this was taken with a Nikon D850 and the 500 millimeter PF lens. Uh, settings were 1 800th of a second, F8, ISO 1600. And um, anyway, just a, a really nice portrait. Just kind of powerful, black and white. Turned out great there. Moving along, image, second image. And right out of the gate here, I'm going to give a spoiler alert here. This is my favorite image of the entire year. Uh, so this is a another black and white conversion. This is a bison in the snowstorm. This was taken in February. We had a huge snow year last February. And uh, this bison was obviously struggling to survive out there in the snow and the wind. Uh, and this was taken with the Nikon Z7 and the 600 millimeter F4. One five hundredth of a second, F5, ISO 800. And uh, the black and white conversion here again was to kind of eliminate the distraction of any color in there. And this was a little weirdish color. It was the sun had already set, so it was really, you know, kind of blue. And then some, you know, weird oranges on the bison's fur. And I just kind of didn't like the blue and the orange-ish. You know, it was still pretty monochrome, but just the subtle color that was there. I didn't particularly dig it, so I got rid of it and made a nice black and white conversion here. Uh, I have a five foot tall print of it. You can't see it because it's behind the camera, uh, but a five foot tall print of it hanging on the stair, the stairway that goes up there and it looks awesome. So uh, anyway, favorite image of the year, spoiler alert, sorry about that, right out of the gate. And Moving along, next image. This was another one taken in February in the, you know, the snow out there in the Tetons. We had a really big snow year. It covered up all the sagebrush. It really simplified the landscape and gave opportunities for uh, really simple, clean images that I love to make. This is one with a coyote and this cool old tree stump out there, you know, just in this sea of white. 
And uh, I had been following this coyote for quite a while. I made a video about this. If you want to dig into that one deeper, look back through my feed. I'll try and remember to put a link of that in the description if you want to watch the video about the day I made this image. And uh, anyway, this old stump was out there and I loved it. It's a really cool, it's got lots of character and this coyote was like a mile down the road when I first found it and it was heading in that general direction and I made some images as it cruised along. Um, when I saw it getting, you know, heading towards this, I went way down to get ahead of it and waited for it to show up here. And it, it did and I made some nice images. This was my favorite image of that where it was kind of coming up over a little... Uh, a little tiny hill there in the snow and just kind of looked and gave, uh, you know, a look back towards, uh, towards the right there. And uh, just a beautiful, clean, simple winter image. Uh, I love the simplicity of it and the subject, this really nice looking coyote out there trying to survive winter in the Tetons. This was, again, Nikon Z7 and the 600mm f4. This was 1 250th of a second f11 ISO 100. I went to f11 here. Normally I like to shoot wildlife with a pretty big aperture for a shallow depth of field. I was trying to get this tree that was actually, you know, further away than the coyote. I was trying to get it as kind of in focus as I could. And with a 600 millimeter lens, you can't get it completely in focus, but I went f11 to do kind of as good a job as I could do there. All right, moving along. Here we go. This is now into April. This ain't the Tetons, as you can tell. This is Death Valley. This was my first trip into Death Valley, and I, I just had one evening to do photography in Death Valley, and I chose to head out into the sand dunes, and uh, I just wandered around out there for a couple of miles, and it was so great, so much fun. I'm going to go back again uh, later this winter uh, and try and spend at least uh, maybe two days there. But anyway, I found this beautiful hill out there, and uh, waited for the light, and it was fantastic. Uh, I made a video about this, too. So dig through my um, video feed there if you want to see me in Death Valley. Uh, but anyway, this was just wait finding the subject there and waiting for the light and that beautiful S-curve that came through. Dead center in the frame. I'm a rule breaker. I put the subject dead center. But it works. And... Uh, Anyway, conditions were just perfect out there. Um, I made a panoramic and uh, combined those, stitched those together. So I've got a really high quality uh, image here. This was taken with the Nikon Z7, 1 15th of a second, F11, ISO 64. And we move on back to Wyoming. In, this is in April as well. I made another video here, this one, with the mountain goat. This was a fun video. You should check this one out. I think it kind of, people were worried about my sanity up there. I didn't feel in danger at all, but I think people were afraid that I was going to slip and fall to my death out there. But I didn't. I survived. But anyway, this, uh, this mountain goat just uh, waited, 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 waited. Uh, the skies cleared up. Got this one beautiful cloud, and then this just little shaft of light popped through. The last like minute or two of light for the day just happened to shoot through and light up right when this uh, mountain goat was standing up. Sometimes things just work out. I sat there in flat, dull light for quite a few hours waiting for this something like this to happen, and it did. Uh, so anyway, I like the composition here of the tree and the beautiful cloud and then kind of the cliff falling off into nothingness. Um, really happy with how this turned out. This was Nikon Z7 with the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter lens. One eight hundredth of a second F8 ISO 200. Here we go to still in April. This is in the Tetons again. This is a April snowstorm with one of our local favorite grizzly bears here. The mo the the mom there. That's uh, her name is Blondie. And this is one of her cubs. They separated shortly after this photo was taken. So I think this might have been the last day I saw her and those two cubs together. Um, just a fantastically beautiful April snowstorm. And these bears were right there. This was a Nikon Z7, 600 millimeter F4, 1 320th of a second F4, ISO 1600. 
Um, I went with a high key black and white here. It was it was a very monochrome day out there, anyways, with just the the you know overcast and the dumping snow. But again, we kind of have some of those browns and oranges in the grizzly fur that is kind of working in my mind was working a little bit against the blue light of that overcast snowstormy kind of uh, scene happening out there. But it's pretty monochrome to begin with, so I took the color away. Nice high key uh, black and white here. Just a cute moment between these two uh, as she rests her chin on the, cu on the cub and they're both looking kind of in my direction here. This was shot from my vehicle and um, just thrilled with this image. Just a cute moment here in beautiful, beautiful light, beautiful scene with the snowfall. All right, moving along, here we go with, now I'm into May and this is a dusky grouse. It used to be called a blue grouse, but they changed the name of it. Uh, but anyway, this photo is one I've been trying to get for quite a while that just shows this magnificent, kind of strange, odd, bizarre look of these grouse. This is a male dusky grouse displaying for the females. So this is his way of trying to attract them. Uh, and so he's got these fantastic orange eyebrows that puff up out of nowhere. Like you don't even see him when he's not displaying. And then all of a sudden they just go and they blow up. And then that chest patch, you don't see any of that red there or the white feathers unless they're displaying. So when they get into like the full mode where they're trying to seduce a lady, it's, this is what you get. And, um, to get a, a clean shot with no grass or brush in front of them and to have a nice clean background, nice up close to see all the detail up in those eyebrows and in, in the chest. Uh, it ain't easy to get that. And I'd been struggling to get one, you know, uh, a really nice image like this that, that really shows off the, the display and the colors and just the weirdness of this bird. So uh, very happy with this image. Um, it's just cool. This is a Nikon Z7 with the 500 millimeter PF lens, one one thousandth of a second, F5.6, ISO 1600. And when you're working with a subject this close to you, you really need a high shutter speed, more so than a subject that's further away. So a thousandth of a second was the minimum I'd want here. Uh, luckily, I got a nice super tack sharp image here out of that scene. Okay, off we go to May. This is a May snowstorm. This is just a cute image. Like this is one where I probably uh, will be the last one, uh, the first one I would throw out of my favorite top 20. Um, Cause it's not like particularly great or unique, but I just had a blast with these geese out there that day in the snowstorm and the little um, goslings. And so for me, it's a cute image. Uh, I won't disagree with that. It's got, you know, the, the green grass and the fresh snowfall and these cute little goslings and the, the mom or the dad, I don't know which one it is, but so uh, it's a, it's a fine enough image. I really like it because it reminds me of being out there and spending them time with them and watching them for a couple of hours and photographing them. And, uh, anyway, I think this made my top 20 favorites, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe you disagree. I, I think it's kind of, it's probably a mediocre image. Like if I saw somebody else post this picture, I'd be like, oh, that's cute. But for me, this one was about the experience of being there with them and reminding me how much fun that was. So this was again, Nikon Z7 with the 500 millimeter PF lens, 1 1,000th, F5.6, ISO 1600. Here we go to a, just a plain old landscape image of my favorite mountain. So again, I'm biased because this is my favorite mountain and this is my favorite lake. And this is my favorite place to be in the world is Jackson Lake in Grand Teton National Park. So I'm biased. I think it's a fine enough landscape image. Uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, we got a nice reflection in Jackson Lake, some fog, and then that beautiful clouds, you know, kind of giving it a little bit of more dynamism there, a little bit more energy with the diagonals of the clouds and stuff. Uh, so I, I dig this image just, you know, again, for me personally, this is my favorite place on earth, my favorite mountain. And it's a, it's a great picture of that. So this image means a lot to me. This was taken with the Fuji GFX 50R. Uh, 
one two hundredth of a second F8 ISO 100. And the image quality coming off of that GFX system is just fantastic. Uh, I love that using that system. And uh, this is a beautiful image. Here we go. Image number 10 on the list is a bison in magic light. And this one's about all about the light, really. Uh, you know, it was sunrise, there was a storm coming in behind, and there's just this tiny little sliver of clear sky for the sun to come up and uh, light anything up. And it was really kind of questionable whether we'd get any light there or not. But uh, just right at the right time, this bison was walking across the ridge. The light came for like 60 seconds and then disappeared. And so I was able to severely underexpose this image. I think I was at minus two on what the meter was telling, maybe even minus three on what the meter said I should be at. Uh, but that's what I wanted. I wanted the silhouette, you know, just enough of that dark foreboding, foreboding uh, cloud layer above it, but that magic rim light and then the frosty breath of the bison. And this particular... I shot a, you know, a tick, 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 tick as it walked there. And this was my favorite frame that I took for a couple of reasons. The leg position there, I've got all four legs separated. None of them are overlapping and none of them are in weird, awkward positions. But I also like the way the, the frosty breath is coming up around the horn. So without that frosty breath behind the horn, that horn kind of gets lost in the darkness of the background a little bit. So just the way there's enough brightness behind that horn to really emphasize the silhouette of that horn uh, really helps make the image. That little tiny subtle detail uh, made a big difference in that series of fra uh, frames that I shot to make sure I got this image and this was the most powerful one from that series. Okay, so that's the first 10. I said I'm going to do 20. I'm going to end the video here with the first 10. So uh, I'm gonna do the next 10 in a separate video just to keep them a little bit shorter, more manageable um, length. So I'll keep it going in the next one. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one with numbers 11 through 20. My second favorite image of the year is coming up in the second batch and it's fantastic. I have a couple of really good images coming up next. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Have a great day. See you soon.